In the previous video, we talked about how to use thin airfoil theory to estimate the zero lift angle of attack and quarter cord pitching moment of uh, airfoils with a uh, with a camber line expressed as a function, and um, and that's really powerful. But there are lots of airfoils out there that actually are defined using piecewise functions for their camber distribution. So let me just scroll up again and uh, and remind you what we discussed last time real quick. So uh, this is example 1.6.1, page 30 in Mechanics of Flight by Warren Phillips. And this is the function, this is the camber line function that we looked at. And uh, we, we use thin airfoil theory to um, evaluate what the zero lift angle attack and the pitching moment about the quarter cord uh, is for this airfoil. Um, but like I said, th uh, there are many airfoils out there that actually um, use piecewise functions for the camber line distribution. So, uh, for example, uh, what that might look like is um, an airfoil where here's the, the leading edge and the trailing edge, and maybe there's, there's some function uh, up to some uh, point here. We'll call this uh, X. MC, the, the X location of maximum camber, and this is YMC, that maximum camber, uh, and then another function uh, back to the trailing edge. And so um, the way that these are often written is that uh, we would say the camber line YC um, is, uh, looks like this, where, where uh, first we can have some function of, uh, of X over C, um, X, M, C, Y, M, C uh, here, and that that function is good uh, from zero, which is the leading edge, up to um, an X over C location of uh, X, M, C over C. Whoops, I missed the, there we go. So in, in that range, uh, so less than any, or equal to, to um, uh, those are those symbols there. And then we'd have, so that'd be like function one, and then we have function two, which is also a function of x over c, uh, x, m, c, uh, y, m, c, or, or can be functions of those. And that function goes from uh, x, m, c over c uh, up to uh, up to one, the, the trailing edge. And you could have more than this. You know, you could have uh, functions that, uh, or camber lines defined by more than two functions. Um, but anyway, uh, what I'm trying to show here is that, that this camber line um, is defined by these two different functions and they have a region where that function is, is uh, good for, right? So we're gonna apply this first function in this region, the second function in this region, in this example. So for example, the NACA, uh, four-digit series is a very uh, common airfoil series, and it is actually defined by two different functions, um, and one that goes up to this XMC and then from XMC to one. So how do we use thin airfoil theory to um, evaluate the properties or estimate the properties of, uh, of airfoils with multiple functions like this? So I'm just going to walk through the basic steps um, of, of how we do that. And actually the steps are identical to what we did before in the previous example, uh, but we just have some extra things that we need to keep track of here to make sure we capture um, uh, the camera line over the entire uh, airfoil. So the first step, um, and, and I'll just write them down here. Um, so typically, uh, number one, I like to non-dimensionalize. Uh, oops, let me try that again. non dimensionalize the camber line. Okay, so, so basically, um, if it's given to us in, in Y over C, I like to write that in Y over C over C. And that's really simple. You just basically divide everything through by a C in, in those equations um, in order to get that uh, in a non-dimensional form. Okay, now we're take the, the, the derivative. Okay, so now we take the derivative of, uh, of y over c, y, uh, y of camber line over c uh, with respect to x over c. Okay, so, um, so in this example here, we would get, um, uh, we would get uh, the derivative of y over c over, uh, excuse me, let me, rewrite that y over c over c 
with respect to x over c is equal to, well, we actually have two functions, right? So we're going to have a derivative of function 1 here and the derivative of function 2 uh, with respect to x over c. And uh, this first one, again, is going to be good from 0 to, uh, to xmc over c, and the second one is going to be good from xmc over c less than or equal to x over c up to 1, okay? So we've now taken the derivative, but we have two derivatives that we're tracking instead of just one, like in the previous example. Okay, now we apply the change of variables. So number three, apply change of variables. And uh, our change of variables is, um, is the same one that we've been using before to get from uh, x over c to theta, okay? And so that change of variables is x over c is equal to 1 half uh, times 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, so you should be familiar with that. So we apply that change of variables and, uh, and plug that in here so that now we have our our derivative, or the, the slope of the camera lines, in terms of theta instead of x over c. Okay, there's one little trick, though, when we do that, is that not only will the, the actual functions now be in terms of theta, but also the limits will be in terms of theta. So we can, we can solve for, in fact, we can just rearrange this uh, to get uh, what theta is as a function of x over c, and theta is the arc cosine, so cosine minus 1 of uh, 1 minus 2 times x over c. Okay, so that's the, the reverse transformation there. So, um, so what we're going to find is if we were to plug in xmc over c here for this x over c, we would get a theta that would tell us where the, what the theta value is at maximum camber. Now remember, um, we've got, uh, typically we think of the airfoil up here, let me put this in a different color, but typically we think of the airfoil, here we go, um, you know, extending from, from zero to one in terms of, you know, the leading edge to the trailing edge, in, in, and that's a, an x over c representation. But uh, these integrals, once we do the change of variables from, from uh, uh, x over c to theta, theta goes from 0 to pi, okay? So uh, let's get, um, in terms of theta, it goes from 0 to pi, okay? So we need to know the theta value here. So I'll, I'll say this is theta here, and uh, this, this previous one is uh, x over c. And so we need to know the theta value. What's the theta value uh, at that x and uh, xmc, and we're going to get a theta mc. That's the theta value at the maximum camber, okay? So this is fairly straightforward because we can just say, well, theta sub m, uh, or theta sub mc is equal to cosine minus 1 times 1 minus 2 xmc over c, okay? And we know what we're given xmc over c uh, right here, or in the problem statement, typically you know what that is, and so so you can plug that in to figure out what theta value uh, uh, corresponds to that. Okay, so so now uh, let's just let's just rewrite what this would look like. So our dyc over c dx over c uh, now is written in terms of theta. So we're going to have uh, the derivative of f1 as a function of theta dx over c and the derivative of f2 as a function of theta, dx over c. Um, and the limits now are going to be from 0, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to theta mc. And then this, the limits here are theta mc, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi. Okay, So we've, we've changed our limits um, as well into theta instead of x over c. Okay, so at this point, we are ready to plug these into the integrals. Okay, so that's the, the, 
the final step here is to plug uh, into the the integrals. We have different integrals for um, those can be um, a zero, a one, and a two, or you can plug directly into the integrals that uh, give you alpha l zero or c m at the quarter chord, the uh, section of pitching moment. So anyway, we have integrals for each of those, but as we plug those in, so I'm just going to do you know one of those integrals. Um, uh, those integrals typically uh, were written from zero to pi, and so you'd have some something in there d theta, and so uh, in fact, let me just scroll back up to show how we did this before. So uh, so in this example, uh, here's our y c over c. Um, we took the derivative and uh, let's see, yeah, here's the derivative down here. And then we did the, the change of variables and got that into terms of theta. And now we plug those into these, these integrals. So for example, alpha L0, we plug in that dyc over uh, you know the, this function here into the integral for alpha L0. And we integrated from 0 to pi. And then we just worked through the integration to get a final solution there. Well, we're going to do the same thing, except that when we plug in these integrals, um, because we have two parts to this, it's it's not uh, we can't just integrate from zero to pi in one go. Instead, we need to break that into an integral from zero to theta m c d theta. And for this one, we're going to plug in. Uh, let me just grab a different color here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna plug in this this f one function, right? So so we've got this f one function there that's going to go into there. And then we're going to add to that the integral from theta mc up to pi. And that will have something t times d theta. And uh, for that one, we'll be bringing in the, the f2, OK? Because we have two different functions. The first function is good from, in this region, 0 to theta mc. And so we're going to integrate that. And then we're going to add to it the second integral that goes from theta to pi and use the second function that's good in that region, okay? So the steps are identical. I just wanted to walk through this um, as an example of how to do these, these uh, piecewise camber distributions that are actually very common. Like I said, the NACA 4 series, which is uh, perhaps the most widely uh, used airfoil set out there, um, it is defined by a piecewise function like this. And so um, anyway, this is the process that you would go through. Everything else in, in thin airflow theory is identical. You just have to keep track of these limits. When you plug things into these integrals, you just have to make sure you're tracking these limits. And it, it complicates the problem a little bit because it goes from a single integral into uh, two different integrals in this example. And like I said earlier, you could split this. You know, some airfoils may be uh, defined with even with even three parts or four parts. And so... Uh, but the process would be the same. You just have to know what the limits are and make sure you're integrating over the entire airfoil from zero to pi, you know, in theta, but broken up into the piecewise components.